Eric Armstead hasn't played since week four. Uh, every week, he, someone asks Kyle Shanahan about Armstead. Is he coming back this week? And Kyle says the same thing. We hope so. He's doing better. And then on Wednesday or the first day they practice that week, he doesn't practice. Nor does he practice any day. And that's been the, what's been going on the last since he's gone down since week four. We hope he's coming back soon. We don't know when. Maybe this week. No practicing. They could have put him on IR. You can put a guy on IR, and he has to stay there for four weeks. If they had put him on after the game against the Rams week four, he could have been eligible to come off right now, which is so – it's been – why didn't they do it? They probably hoped or thought he'd be coming back already, and he's not. And so they've wasted – they've been playing with 52 players the last month. They could have had an extra player on their team. Had they known that Armstead wouldn't be back by now, probably, they probably would have put him on IR. So what the hell is going on? What is going on here? What do you think? Dude, plantar fasciitis, man. I'm again, and that's on the one foot. On the other foot, he's got like a stress fracture in his ankle. The fracture is the one I'm least worried about. It's the I think that was going to heal before that plantar fasciitis that he has. Because look, I think all of us, you know, will never claim to be a doctor, but I think we all have a good semblance of how severe injuries are from watching sports, whether you just watch football or you watch a collective of sports. And my understanding of plantar fasciitis, it's almost on par or in the same ballpark as that Liz Frank injury. All those type of soft tissues, whatever's in your foot, it don't recover overnight or over month or over months. Yeah. He has to – I feel like his season might be done. I, I, I stake claim to this. Like one of the last times we talked about this, it's like Armstead might – even if he comes back, he's going to be at like at 75% at best maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, how many times – running backs get this a lot. Um, this injury lingers. You know, I've seen it. it soccer does. players get it. I've seen it. I've seen another. And it can sport. get worse. It can get worse. It can get worse. So it's. Yeah. Are you sure he's even going to be back? Do you need? I mean, I mean, look, you need him back for sure. But he but should I be on IR back. right now. You know They're what I'm saying? They're keeping him off yeah. IR because they don't want to use the remaining bullet chances they have on activation of whoever else could be, and maybe they then clearly they overestimate or underestimated how severe this was, and then you know who knows about Kinlaw, and it's like it's a, it's really bad. You have your two pillars in the middle and they're they're both gone they're both gone and this is really bad right now and i just feel like it's like i have more hope in kinlock coming back than i do armstead because that plantar man it's 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 pretty much been haunting like athletes for years yeah and this is why i feel like well this is an injury that you get when you're older he's he just turned 29 you're invested in an older defensive tackle and now it's starting to look like his lower body's breaking down a little bit so this is uh discouraging and what I want to talk about, I don't know the extent of the injury. I'm not a doctor and I'm not privy to any of these details. But what I do know is that the Niners didn't put him on IR. That indicates they were hoping or expecting that he'd be back by now. Because it's been it's been seven weeks. So there's a disconnect here. And I feel like what's happening is they go up to Armstead every week and they're like, Armstead, do you think you could play this week? And he's like, yeah, we'll give it a shot. And then it's like, no, I don't feel good. Which is his prerogative, but this is what happens when you get when you locked in to a 29 year old player for years. I mean, it's it's different than having a 23 year old guy who's gunning for that first contract. It's just different mentality. He's thinking, I gotta get that third contract. I gotta find a way to get that third contract, which is gonna give me like a ton of money on my signing bonus, and that'll be my last big payday. Um, so now I have to protect my body, and it's not in his interest. At, to, to your point, to like play at 75% and look bad and potentially make this worse and make this something that could be a career ender. Because at this point, at 29, things could get bad. Things could go sideways. So this is why I feel like, you know, you don't want to have too many high price vets on your team. And you look at teams like the Patriots, they've often traded people like this. And you're like, how could you get rid of such a great? Well, mm-hmm. well, so Eric Armstead, it's interesting that just the fact that he isn't on IR and the Niners keep saying, yeah, we hope this week, we hope this week. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, we'll see if he ever comes back. What is he even doing? I don't know how they can even say that because it's like if, if both your feet are damaged, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. What are you doing? And even if you – and oh, who, who, Whose podcast did I listen to? I forgot. I think Guy Haber mentioned this about maybe the reason why he had that fracture on one of his legs is because he was overcompensating, which is like Happy. natural. I happens. think anyone who's injured themselves, whether it's your left, right arm, left, right leg, you compensate for the other. I know for sure it's like I, I've always been that way, where, whether I have extended my knee or sprayed an ankle. It's like you you overcompensate. So, And even even with that, it's like, you know, what are you doing? How is he rehabbing? And then, then he has to get in football shape. How many snaps is he going to come back into? This is bleak. I'm not holding my breath that he comes back at all. And if he does, 
the 49ers are just hoping like, hey, all we're hoping for is a late December push that he's like good enough to be in. We'll roll him out there on just an early down running back. I mean, an early down defensive lineman to go against the running backs. Because that's just all been, I see left of him. I just feel like they, his season has been horribly mismanaged. Let's go back through it. Yes. He got hurt on the first play of training camp. Hurt his knee. I want, hurt something. Missed all the training camp. Came back for week one. Was yeah, healthy. He sprained it. He sprained something. He missed all the training camp, all the preseason, came back week one, got hurt week two. Missed week three, but the Niners needed him out there because the season was going left early on, Pushed, uh, brought him back for week four, thinking it's not a big deal injury. He injures the other leg, and then they're like, oh, okay, like you have two injured legs, but we're not going to put you on IR because we really freaking need you back as soon as possible. And he's like, yeah, all right. I I'll see what I, I feel week to week, but... They've really mismanaged Eric Armstead's season, and I'm not saying I'm not blaming Armstead. I'm I, I'm not blaming the Niners either, but there is just some disconnect between those two guys, those two sides. Like he should be on. Us, what what do the 49ers go from here now? Look, that's a great point. That right now he's this this question, but if Armstead's done for the year or he's not coming back or a small capacity, like is it is this pretty much what we're seeing now? What they get from the interior because this is a. This is this is going to be something that if they go against a high power running team, that's really going to hurt them. It hasn't been exposed yet. I remember Ryan on Twitter. That's said, not the Chargers. That's not the Chargers. That's not the Chargers. It's not they the don't Chargers. Get any push. And I talked. To, I I've been watching the Chargers, and I had to talk to our boy Nick Cothrell. I was like, hey, if they really want to win, they're gonna have to run the ball, but they can't run the ball, right? He's like, hell no, they don't care. No, I don't like it's zero push. Yeah. So imagine who who who's a good running team and Kenneth Walker. My yeah. God, Kenneth Walker might run over the Seattle. I mean, the over the Niners right. on Thursday Night Football. Right. And so, so going back to the McCaffrey trade, he's a nice player, and he does improve the Niners' passing game, which we've said. But uh, they had a big needed defensive tackle, they had a big needed cornerback, and they didn't address those things. Uh, and and they're like basically being like, "Hey, Armstead Kinlaw, Armstead Kinlaw, Jason Verrett. That's what they're doing this year. Jason Verrett's already not panned out, not his fault. Yeah. But that was their fault for hoping and praying on such a long shot. Now you're asking." Hey, Armstead, you feeling good? Not really. Okay, we'll check you next week. Kinlaw, you feeling great? Not really. All right, we'll check you next week. Like, that's where they're at. And they could have made a deal. Instead, they swapped out running backs, and you got Kyle Shanahan being like, well, we really didn't change anything. You know, we lost <laughs> Jeff Wilson Jr. I hate uh -huh. that answer so much. Uh-huh. 